Good morning, Brookside family. If we could just find our way to our seat, that would be awesome. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so loud, Gloria. It's like, <laughs> startle people. <laughs> That's okay. All right, guys, we'll quiet down. We're going to start here in just a sec with a word of prayer. Well, actually, I feel like God wants me to read something. All right, so I'm just going to start off a sec by reading this scripture. I feel like the Lord wanted me to read it to you this morning. So how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord with my whole being, body and soul. I will shout joyfully to the living God, for even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at the place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King, my God, what joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises. Father God, that is our desire this morning, is to come into your presence, to dwell in your house, to come close We want to behold your beauty. We want your glory to fill this earth in this place today, Jesus. Because when we enter in, God, all things have to fade away. It's in your presence where we are filled, sustained, encouraged, strengthened. You're it, God. You're the answer to every problem that everyone faces in this room. You. So I just thank you, God, that today there's going to be joy in the house of the Lord. And not just for the service time, but we're going to leave with it. And we're going to give it away. And it's going to splash on everyone around us, God. And we're not going to be downtrodden with our heads down. No, we're going to be people of God. filled. We are filled with life himself. So, Lord, we just enter into that place where we declare you're holy. And apart from you, truly, God, we can't do anything even have this service. You actually put breath in our lung this, uh, this morning so that we could live. We're dependent on you this morning. It's your spirit. Let, may we yield and be led by it, Father. And may you get all the glory this morning. I pray we find ourselves humbly entering in, Lord, bowing low before our King, giving you all the honor that's due. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, uh, do we have any visitors in the house today? No. If you, <laughs> Kev, you don't count. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're not a visitor, you're family. Um, so, on behalf of Brookside Ministries, if you are new, we have welcome packets we want to get to you so that you can get to know us and what's going on at Brookside and we can get to know you. Um, tonight, fire starters. Woo woo! Yeah. Show up. Get changed and transformed, equipped, empowered. That's the point. So that we can take the kingdom out there. Grief Share starts tomorrow, uh, Monday, September 23rd, 6 to 8 p.m. Every other Monday in the war room. If you have any questions, see Miss Sally. Every Monday. Oh, every Monday. Thank you. Every Monday in the war room, 6 to 8 um, There's times for intercessory prayer, which is literally the life of the church, the breath of God, it's literally prayer. Saturday evenings at 5.30, Wednesday mornings at 9.30, and the first Wednesday night of the month at 6.30 p.m. Um, during Sunday morning services, there are four stations. You'll see people positioned if you're kind of new here. Those are people who are interceding for our service and for on our behalf. Um, we have a special speaker on Wednesday night, September 25th at 6.30 p.m. Lori, I'm going to butcher her last name. <laughs> Lori, <laughs> I'll honor you. <laughs> All right, we have a special announcement this morning from our awesome brother Tom. God bless. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. If you give me a moment here, I had it, and my finger hit this something, and I lost it. Yes, praise God. Oh, 
hook with silence. All right, praise God. Um, this is a, an announcement that on um, behalf with uh, the elders and pastors that I would like to make. Uh, the elders have prayed over and sought the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction for Brookside. We have been. We've been praying really hard about this. Pastor Jerry Hellman met with the elders where he reported that after much prayer, he will continue to serve as senior pastor until another person is hired to the senior pastor's position. He will assume a new position as founding pastor of Brookside Ministries Church. He is not retiring. I want to emphasize that he is not retiring. He is too valuable. Amen. Amen. He will serve in a capacity where he can provide biblical guidance, spiritual leadership, and godly wisdom to help people know and grow closer to Jesus. Pastor Jerry would be available for both the present congregation and incoming new senior pastor. The senior pastor's position description will be posted in the foyer, online, and other venues. In the meantime, should Pastor Jerry be unable to fulfill his responsibilities, assistant pastor Richard Freeland and myself will temporarily step in to co-pastor Brookside. The elders will provide their job descriptions and responsibilities at that time. Our goal is to be transparent with this process. We will provide you with updates as things progress. Amen? Amen. If there are any questions, please write them down clearly so that and send them to the church. Pastor Jerry, any eldership, will provide information and guidance. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, to you we give the glory, the honor, and all of the praise, for you are the Holy One, the Mighty One, and this is your church. Yes. You gave us Pastor Jerry. You put him in place, and you continue to strengthen him and guide him as you strengthen us and guide us. So, Father, we surrender to you. We surrender to you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and we surrender to you, the Holy Spirit, as our guide. In the mighty, blessed name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. Amen. Can everybody stand in honor of the word or in Ephesians today? For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Praise the Lord. We have a room filled with children of light. Can you say amen? amen. How many can say I'm a child of God? I'm a light, glory to God. One thing the Lord put on my heart this morning before we pray and ask God to bless us with the presence of the presence of the Holy Spirit is something good's going to happen to somebody here today. Amen. Something good's going to happen. We just have to open up to the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? So we open up to the Lord, the Spirit of God comes upon us in a mighty and powerful way, and we are changed and transformed more into the image of Jesus from glory to glory. I like that, don't you? Yes. Praise God. Well, we're going to pray over the offering and want to remind you that we give the offering in worship. That means we invite you to come up and put the offering here in the offering plates. We encourage you to stay up front if you'd like to because you won't be distracted if you come up here and you won't have a whole bunch of people running in and out to distract you. Amen? 
All right, let's pray. Dear Spirit of God, come upon us with your power, with your anointing. Fill us, challenge us, heal us, restore us in Jesus' name. And Father, bless the offering that will be given now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.
you call my name cause you know my name Disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. In the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, it's stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. And I believe there's another miracle here in this room. And this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And this is the praise make a dead man walk again. Sound of drop bones
Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness. You filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of But I can't help but say
good, you are good, you are good.
shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb says in his word, even in the depths of hell, his love is still there for us, and we can't hide from it or run from it, and we can't even miss it, it's just always there. The only way we, we don't get to participate in his love is if we ignore his love, but his love is relentless, and it's reckless, and it comes after us forever and always 
all the time, up, down, left or right, his love is there for us to receive and to welcome. Yes, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your unending love. Should I? 
Praise the Lord. I've enjoyed worship, haven't you, this morning? Boy, the King of Kings is here, our Heavenly Father is here, the Holy Spirit is here. What a wonderful fellowship that we have enjoyed. Rachel has a word to share, and so, oh, I guess Natalie's going first. Yes, okay. So as I was interceding, God showed me this heart, and it was really stony. And he said, a lot of people in our congregation are going through a lot of things. They're not understanding what's going on. And the Lord said, I'm exposing the stony parts of your heart. And I want to work on those places. And so when we have surgery, there's still a recovery process. It's still painful. And so God said, many of you are going through what's called surgery of the heart today. I saw the words bitterness. But the one that really stood out to me, the Lord said, was unforgiveness. And it's the biggest one that will hinder his presence from moving in our Amen. house. So I just ask him now to reveal to me and to everyone in this house, if there's somebody that we need to forgive and let it go, that we would do so so that it won't hinder the growth in, the, in this house can prosper in the presence of God. Well said. That was well said, Amen. Natalie. Thank you. I have a very simple word. It's just, I am here, saith the Lord. And I'm going to be there, saith the Lord. Amen. You have a word. I'm going to ask you if I can walk in my gifting. Rachel's in charge. Okay. Well, what is your gifting? Stephanie, will you come down? This is a no reflection of, of you, Johnny. This is a word that I have for this this lady the Lord sees your heart he knows you are a worshiper you stand at the door you stand at the door push it open push through you are a worshiper you you pave the way for the spirit to move I pray that the Lord would give you a double portion of his spirit to push open the door, not only for yourself, but for those in this congregation, in this fellowship, in this family, Hallelujah. to come into the presence of God. Lord, continue to use this woman and help her to push open the door for the entrance of the spirit into your into your body. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. We have some prayer concerns we're going to lift before the Lord. Lily needs healing. We continue to believe God for her healing. Judy needs healing. We want to continue to pray for her. Tom and Linda, they both need healing. We've been lifting them up in prayer. We lift them up again. Lee and Barbara need prayer. John and Elena need healing. Bobby and Sean need spiritual healing, emotional healing. Mary Dries needs healing. Linda Hunt needs healing. Let's pray for all of these right now. Will you stand? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he went to the whipping post, that he bore a stripe for every condition that's in these people's lives, physically and spiritually. We're believing you right now to touch them. You're the same, Jesus, yesterday, today, and forever. Come, Holy Spirit, upon each of these that have been mentioned that need healing, whether it be Emotional healing or physical healing, just heal. Stretch forth your hand right now. I believe you to do that in Jesus' name. 
I pray for Rich as he's coming back from the tour that he's been on, that you will yes. protect him and those that are with him, that they will arrive back here safely. I pray for our country, Lord, that you would work in a mighty way. The spirit of violence is so prevalent, Lord. We pray that you come against the spirit of violence in our nation and that you, Lord, will pour out of your spirit in a mighty and powerful way. And Lord, that we will see a mighty move of your spirit, that you will send revival, another great awakening, Lord. That's the cry of our hearts. And Lord, we know it begins in each of our individual hearts. So Lord, today revive me, revive everybody here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your glory. We pray for Israel, Lord. We see what's going on. We see all the enemies against that nation. Protect it, I pray. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Tonight, pour out on fire starters, Lord. May there be equipping that takes place tonight in the people that will be in attendance. I ask that in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for it. Praise be to your name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have one more prayer request. I'm going to pray it right now. Father, you know the person that should be the senior pastor of this church. You know who that is. We pray that you will provide that person and that you will help us to be able to connect with them. We ask that in the name Jesus. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We have a speaker this morning that you've heard more than once. In fact, he's already been up here today. Tomas or Tom, as some of you know him. Caitlin. He's coming. God's put Caitlin. a word on his heart. And I know the Lord's going to bless. And Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I start, I need to be obedient. And, and we know that my wife's in pain, but anyone here is in pain right now, physical pain. In physical pain, I need you to stand up, please. Lord, laid this on my heart a couple of days ago. People, surround them. Do your part. Surround them, please. Don't let, don't let anyone be standing alone. That's right. We praise you, Father. We glorify you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. The word says that by you shed your blood for us. that our sicknesses, our pains, turmoils have been all taken care of at the cross. So in the name of Jesus, I break the curse of pain. In the name of Jesus, for there is no greater name. Leave our bodies in the name of Jesus. Leave our bodies. But you have no dominion, you have no power, you have no say-so, you have no power. We pray for your goodness, O oh Father God, for your healing power, your righteousness to fall upon everyone that is standing, everyone that's listening, that's in pain right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be complete in the name of Jesus. For as it is in the kingdom, so it be here on earth and in our bodies. In the name of Jesus. Be glorified, Father. Be exalted, Father. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For 
for you did not forget any one of us. Each and one here is on your name. Our names are written on your hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of course, my message has nothing to do with this. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. How's everyone doing? Praise God. Doing great. Amen, amen, amen. He is true to his word. He is true to his word. The sermon that I have, a couple of months ago, I had to speak at the men's uh, retreat. And he gave me this, uh, this title, and, and he asked me to do it again. So it's called Choices. Choices. And we all have the opportunity and ability to make choices in our lives. Correct? Yes. Who doesn't make a, ch a decision, a choice here? I mean, who breathes without making a decision that requires a choice? We aren't walking around in a zombie, clueless state avoiding making decisions. Choices we make and we make them daily, whether good or bad. These choices determine our outcome. Now, choice as a noun is the act of choosing, selection. Also, the power gives us the power that we have to choose. It's an option. <coughs> Excuse me. Joshua 25, 15 says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates? Or will you be able to, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now, or that you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen, amen. But as for me and my family or my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Amen. Father, to you I give the glory, the honor, and the praise. You, Father, give me the opportunity to bring this word. So I'm trusting, Father God, that you will speak through me, Lord. Use me for your glory. Use my tongue, use my heart, my mind. May I stay on your word. Close all the rabbit trails. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. After the death of Moses, Joshua, the son of Nun, Nun led the, uh, the generation of Israelites to a great victories in the land of Canaan, establishing a foothold in the promised land. Then, as his death approached, Joshua gathered the people of Israel together to encourage them to renew their covenant with the Lord. Because apparently they have forgotten. So he, he wanted to remind them. As Moses had done, Joshua offered them a choice. You could serve those dead gods. You could serve the gods of the people that we annihilated. Or serve the almighty God, the one that has delivered you from Egypt. See, the Israelites had been having a very difficult time keeping their commitment, their covenant with God. So Joshua warned them as he took his stand. Joshua had them choose, make a choice that would benefit them and their families. We have the same opportunity to make that choice as to whom we serve, whom you should be serving. And for now, we have the freedom to do so, folks. We do have that freedom to do so right now. James 1.5 says, 
If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. That's a choice. Who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you if you ask. If you choose to ask God. Show of hands. Who wants to be dumb? Come on. Who wants to be dumb? Thanks, Chad. Apparently not. So if we don't be dumb, who do we ask? Who do we go to? We ask him. James tells us how to make wise choices. He encourages seeking wisdom from God, who grants it generously and without reproach. This suggests that in the face, in the face of difficult decisions, turning to God for wisdom is a crucial step. It reassures believers that God is willing to provide the necessary insight and understanding to make informed choices. This verse highlights the importance of prayer and reliance on God in decision-making processes. The scripture acknowledges that we as humans have a free will to make choices, right? How many times have you guys proven your free will? Mm-hmm. And there's an emphasis on personal responsibility for the choices one makes. Lucifer had choices, and, he didn't, and it didn't turn out well for him. Actually, he made choices. Because he had and still has free will. According to Revelation 12, he, Lucifer chose pride over the eternal paradise for aiming to be like God, the Father, and he chose to influence his angels to go to the bad side rather than staying on the eternal paradise with God. Ecclesiastes 10, 2 says, The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. Oh, you guys didn't get that. Right, left. It was funny up here. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Satan's free will is something we should be careful of. But we should not be afraid of him. We can't be afraid of him. In the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were given the choice to obey or disobey God, they chose to disobey how did that turn out for them? Cain, the people of Babel, Saul, David, Jonah, Ananias, and Sapphira, and Judas were some of the most notable examples of those who made bad choices that led to disobeying direct commandments from God. King Saul didn't obey God, and it cost him his kingdom and his life. Now, King Saul is a very interesting story. You see, um, he was selected by God, but not really, but he was selected by God. And elected by the nation in sin. They wanted to be like the other nations and have a king to rule over them. Who was the ruler over Israel? Who was the ruler over Israel before the kings? God was. And he used the judges. But they didn't like that. They saw all the other kingdoms had kings. And they said, we want to be like them. So God said, okay. Take that dummy. I mean, take that guy over there. <laughs> and he liked them because he was tall. He was good looking. He was... Um, what was it, head over shoulders over, over everyone. He was strong. He knew how to fight. So t uh, grab him, and everybody's, oh, man, all the appearances, just, just right. Just right. But his heart wasn't right. Mm -hmm. 
So the people chose to go against God's leadership of peace, prosperity, and chose to have a king, a ruler, that brought them wars, taxes, hardship, imprisonment. But the most important part here is that they chose to refuse God in their electing of a man. They refuse God. You see, God will give us fair warning. He will give us fair warning. He will give us fair warning. In services like today, he will give us fair warnings through the word, through the music. And if we aren't listening, God will give us what we desire. But then we will have to face the consequences of our decisions and choices away from God. I don't know about you, but I know about Tom. Tom made a lot of bad choices, a lot of bad decisions, and I had to deal with the consequences. And it wasn't until I surrendered my life to him and allowed him to be Lord of my life that things started to go his way. Okay? Choices. The choices that we make have consequences. Have our choices driven us away from God? Yeah. It's driven us away from God. The choices that we make that lead us to disobey God carries grave spiritual danger and leads to detrimental consequences for those who brazenly rebel against their creator. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that, when, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As believers of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and his word, we are not to be adapting or adopting to the patterns and values of this world. Guilty? Advocating instead for the transformation through the renewal of our minds. That's a choice. To have my mind renewed by God. We cannot have one foot on the things of God and another foot in the things of the world. The things of God are higher than the things of the world. And you cannot have balance in your life when you do those things. It totally takes you off of balance. You can't walk. You can't run. You can, and you'll get tired of standing in that position all day long. It's a choice that we make. Because that choice eventually will be judged by God. We cannot, we, it emphasizes the importance of making choices that are in line with God's will and word rather than following social norms and peer pressure. Why? Well, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, 16 says, Now, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But, everybody say, but, <laughs> with one T, but, 
The one who is spiritual discerns all things. He himself is discerned for no one. For who has known the mind of Adonai? But he will instruct him. That he will instruct. In other words, I cannot instruct God. I cannot instruct God. I cannot stand here and well, you know, I've read and I think it should be like this. It should be like this. But then he says, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah. Amen. The people of this world consider the things of God as nonsense. They will not accept it as common sense. They cannot understand the things of God because they have the, the, we have the decoder key because of our salvation and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you have salvation in your life, you have the Holy Spirit, which allows you to discern the things of God. Amen. Outside of that, we cannot know what Jesus actually did for us and how much God really loves us. Amen? Amen? Who, he who, we who are spiritual cannot be judged by any man because we are his righteousness. They can try but not succeed. Don't fall for the traps of the devil because he desires and wants our thought process on the things of God. That's what he wants. He wants to, when, he's, when the Bible says he comes to steal and destroy, it's to steal and destroy the things of God that is in you. He doesn't care about the money that you may have, the luxury car that you're driving. <laughs> he doesn't care about that kind of stuff. Satan wants to steal the joy that you have in God. He stole it from Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve walked with God in the, in the midst of the morning. They had that joy, that fellowship with God. And that's what Satan stole. When they allow Satan to convince them. So we need to be guarded. We need to be on guard not to let him into our lives. That's a choice. That's a daily choice. Now I lost my place. Rabbit holes. When we surrender our lives to Jesus, we gain what? His mind. Automatically. The moment we surrender to Jesus, we gain his mind. That's part of the package. The Holy Spirit starts to challenge our minds according to that of Christ through his word. That's why we need to be in his word. The Holy Spirit starts. Now, we need to choose to allow the Holy Spirit to continue changing and molding our minds so that it will be like that of Christ. Christ as a choice to allow the Holy Spirit to change our mind on a daily, Amen. daily, daily, daily. Because when I'm in trouble, I choose the mind of Christ. Amen. Here, put up the slide, please. When trouble comes my way, I choose the mind of Christ. When I'm doubting, When I'm distressed, I choose the mind of Christ. When I can't remember the things of God, I choose the mind of Christ. Or the things that He has done for me, I choose the mind of Christ. When I have to decide on something, I choose the mind of Christ. Do you get the idea? Yes. Choosing. We have to let it come out of our mouths. I choose. The mind of Christ. I don't want to go to work, but I choose the mind of Christ. <laughs> yeah. I want a two by four this person. 
but I choose the mind of Christ. Do you get the idea? The mind of Christ will teach us and help us, will guide us in making the right choices. Making the right choices. I don't want to go to church. I got so much things to do here. Exactly. It's Wednesday night and I'm tired. Amen. Amen. There's, 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 there's an event at church and ah, that's not for me. That's for them people. Because every time those doors open, not only are we to be present, but it honors the pastor. When we show up to an event at the church that he's hosting, it blesses him. It honors him. So you're talking about, oh, yeah, I need to honor. Show for a service. I'm sorry, I had to go there. Let's talk about some of the choices that we need to be making. We need to choose to have faith, to believe in Jesus. We got to have faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Now without faith it is impossible to please God. For the one who continues comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. He's a rewarder right. if we have faith in him because it pleases him. And if he pleases him, he'll reward us. You get the what he wants to do to us? What does he want to do to us? Reward us. Reward us. Why? Because we choose to have faith in him. And him alone. We need to choose daily to seek the Lord. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. To whom? To, to me. The importance of choosing, prioritizing spiritual values and the things of God's kingdom in our decision-making processes. It reassures believers that God acknowledges and provides for the needs of those who choose to prioritize him. Decision-making. First thing in the morning, I choose to worship him. Instead of, oh. Oh, the alarm went off again. The kids are crying. I got to go to work. And pretty soon, it's cold out there. <laughs> That's coming. Hey, praise the Lord. But I choose the mind of Christ because he prepares me for it. It reassures believers that God acknowledges and provides for the needs of those who chooses to prioritize him. Prioritizing God is thought taught, sorry, taught by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. That's Good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. What do you have plans for me today? <laughs> Benny Hinn wrote a good book years ago about that. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you aware that... Now listen to this. Are you aware that we took the place of Lucifer... That Lucifer vacated? What is that position? Worship. Lucifer vacated. He lost that position when he chose to have pride. Because with pride, you can't worship God. So now here we, here we are. We're born again believers. Now it is our place to worship the Father. With what? Worship the Father with a humble heart. Amen. Choices. Choices we make. This is why when it comes to worship God, worshiping God, we cannot be silent. We should be singing, screaming, shouting, dancing. Because it is for him and him alone. 
I don't do it to please the person in front of me, behind me, next to me. I do it to please the Father. Because he was the one, he was the one with this beautiful baby. What was the first thing that baby did when he was born? Why? Why? This is the first thing the baby did. First breath. Adam. The first breath. So who does that breath belong to? It belongs to God. So I need to bring that breath back to him. Amen. Back to him. That's why when we say the name of Jesus, it's not answering Jesus, but it's, uh, no, I forgot it. Because when we say the name of Jesus in its actual term, the way it's actually it's supposed to be said, we inhale. But it's, it's a different word. We, we, that's our, that's our uh, huh? it's like Yahweh, but it, it's inhaling first, then out. It's not Numa. I'll think about it. I'll let you know some. Okay. Rabbit tail. I told you, rabbit trail. No, it's not Rua either. But uh, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> but not only are we not to be silent in worship, but nor should we criticize anyone's worship to the Father. Don't criticize the worship that someone else has. We used to make fun of this. There was one guy, and I, I, I mentioned this last time I preached, but it, because he was tall, and he was white hair, and hair wiry and everything, his suit didn't match. But when he was standing up here worshiping, he would dance in a way. He wasn't dancing this way. I don't know if, Tom, you remember him. Uh, uh, you guys remember him. Huh? Vernon. Remember Vernon from the school? And he would dance, but he would dance backwards. What the heck is he doing? He would dance backwards up here. We had to give him room. Why? Because he was letting Jesus, the Holy Spirit, lead him in worship. When once we understood that, that was beautiful. So we can't. We got to be careful with that. We need to seek, number three, we need to choose to seek his counsel. And where do I find counsel? In him and his word. I practice calling on him for everything. I, de I learn to depend on, on him for everything. Let me tell you, my job, and I share this also, I'm going to share it again. With my job, I work with individuals that have degrees in the, work, the field that I'm working, with uh, working with computers. They all have degrees and they have uh, uh, masters and things like that. Me, I have a high school diploma. But when I sat to study and when I sat to take my tests, I called on him and he let me, he let me pass. He allowed me to pass. He gave me the, he gave me the, 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 the to pass. Okay? Favor. Amen. To pass. And I'm doing the same work that they are doing. And it's only by the glory of God. It's only by the glory of God. Okay? Besides, at my age, I'm not going back to school. <laughs> so. Amen. Psalm 16, 7 says, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. Now, at first I, hmm, he instructs me in the night. But one thing that Lillian and I started doing of late is, well, we're sleeping. We have um, on YouTube, you can go and download um, healing scriptures, sleeping scriptures, and just let it play while you're sleeping. This is what happens. Because I wake up a lot in the middle of the night. And when I wake up, I have that scripture coming in. I got that scripture coming in. Hallelujah. And I'll quote it until I fall asleep again. 
I've called it. I suggest, I, I, try that. Try it. You'll be happier in the morning. <laughs> Four, we need to choose to be in his, in his unadulterated word. In other words, Psalms 119, 105, you don't have that. Oh, you, oh, do you? No, you don't have it. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's the American standard. There was another standard that says, how sweet is your word to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, we must choose to be in his word daily. Because after a while, it becomes a necessity. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. But it becomes a necessity. So his word comes. And I'm not, I'm not patting on myself. I'm just from experience. Because as I read the word, as I read the word, now I didn't read the word. I got to get through the word. Or either on my way to work, as I have a 40-minute drive to work, I got his word playing. I need the word. I need the word. Because when I'm at the job and a situation comes up, I am able to say, well, you know what? The word of God says, whether they want to hear it or not, they all know. They all know that, that if they come to me, they're going to get word. All right? So, but it's, be it's become a habit. I don't stand on a soapbox to preach because my job is my job. I have to fulfill my obligations at work. Or else I won't get paid. Or I won't have a place to go to work. So I have to fulfill my obligations at work. But if you ask me a question, I will answer them. I also tell them, do you really want to know the answer? So. <laughs> we need to choose to submit ourselves. And James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. How do I resist the devil? Oh, stop it. No. I tell him, I give him back the word. The same thing Jesus did. If it worked for Jesus, why should I change it? Jesus used the word, so I'm going to use the word. You know, I'm not going to invent the wheel. I will resist the devil. I'm going to tell him no. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. It's not going to work for me. So get away from me. Take some other sucker. I ain't, I'm not. It's, you're not. I'm not going to fall for it. Do I mess up sometimes? Yes. But then I know how to get back up. I've learned how to get up. I, 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 I wrestled for many years. Right. And the first thing you teach you when you wrestle is don't fall on your back. So always go to your belly because it's easier to get up from your belly than from your back. Six, we must choose to be his sons and daughters. First John 3.10 says, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is the one who does not love his brother. Practicing his righteousness is choosing to be in and with him by choosing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, to be covered in the blood of Jesus. In loving God, when I, then I will love my brother. Without God, I can't love you because I'm judgmental. I'm selfish. But in God, because he takes those things away from me, I am able to love you. We have to choose not to be giving the devil the opportunity. Well, you heard about his, few, his past, right? <laughs> Mulch on that one. Yeah, but you know his future? He's saved by the blood of Jesus. He's redeemed. 
like I am. So don't tell me about my yesterday. I'm going to tell you about my tomorrow because I know what your tomorrow is going to be. Throw it back at him. Ephesians 4, 7 says, and give no opportunity to the devil. Abstain from listening to the devil and his schemes, his music, his programs. Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Don't give him any real estate in your head. That's right. No Got it. Because 1 John 3, 8 says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. I'm not, this is not coming from me. This is the, what the word says. For whoever makes practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And he did this on the cross and with the power of the resurrection. With him, Jesus, having done this, we, I don't have to struggle. But in victory, choose to be in his righteousness. Choose to have the mind of Christ. Choose to be in the obedience that includes every time that he speaks to us about getting involved in a ministry. Don't ignore or become numb in getting involved. Cricket, 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 cricket. <laughs> I'm going to finish with this one. We must choose to be obedient with our giving unto the Lord. Years ago, Lillian and I chose to be tithers. And let me tell you why we tithe. It provides for God's house, no questions asked. In other words, we don't go around and say, but where is that going to be used? Why are you guys buying that with my money? It's not your money. It's the Lord's money. It tells God that we trust him. It creates margins in our lives for God to fill. It reminds us that we are not our source. Because he gives me the strength on a daily basis to get up to go and work and do what I need to do. It connects our money to a kingdom purpose. One thing about Brookside Ministries, and if you check the board back there, we support a lot of ministries outside of this church. A lot of, ministry, a lot of missionaries and other groups. We are a giving church. So if we're not giving, the church can't give. Because you've seen the Cadillac and the Rolls Royce that he drives, right? Yeah. It's called Toyota. It gives our jobs eternal significance. It transforms our money into a seed for the kingdom. It breaks greed and self-reliance from our hearts. It lets everything in our lives know that God is first. Tithing isn't an act of generosity, but an act of obedience. For we are indebted to God for his radical generosity. And he's been generous to Lillian and I in the years. To me and to my family, it is the least that we can do to be obedient to him with what he has entrusted us with. Those are choices that we made years ago. Sometimes, ooh, do we, are we able to do this? Can we really tithe? Well, I tell you, actually, we can't afford not to tithe. Don't steal from the Lord is what the word tells us. Malachi 3a says that we steal from him every time that we do not surrender to him our tithes and offering. So stop stealing from God. He said this, not me. He said that he will 
open up the windows of heaven. That's favor. And he said that he will rebuke the devourer, Satan, on our behalf. Stop stealing from God. Make that, cho make that choice, that decision to start surrendering to God what belongs to him. And we must choose to make our homes his. Joshua, again, 24, 15. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Folks, family, to make, to serve the Lord is my choice. What will be your choice? What is your choice? Continue to play the games or get serious? I mean, the Lord is fun. Serving the Lord is fun. But it takes work, dedication. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's stand. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord Father, that you've given us to honor you, to bless you. You made it so simple for us to choose to serve you. You made it so simple, but we make it difficult because we, we, we stop listening to you and we listen to other things. We listen to, the, to, to Bill or Jane or Sally and our Sally is good. <laughs> but we thank you, Father, for you are generous. You are abundant. We thank you, Father, for sending Jesus into our lives. We thank you, Father, because when you took Jesus, you gave us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask you now that you touch the hearts. Touch everyone's heart here. Because you're the one that calls us to love Jesus. And then Jesus will take us to the Father. Anyone here is hearing from the Holy Spirit Ask Jesus into your lives. Pray this prayer. Jesus, let's everybody, let's everybody, everybody let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for your love and mercy, your grace, for what you have done on the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for taking us to the Father. We ask for your mind daily. We ask for your heart. Holy Spirit, seal it in the name of Jesus. Seal it. And if you made that prayer, the altars are open. If you want someone to pray with you, to guide you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Choose to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Not just now, but when we leave here, when we go home, or wherever we go, choose to be obedient to the Holy Spirit's calling and guide us. Choose wisely. It's an easy choice. Pastor, you could get the last slide, please. I 
I always like to pray this prayer over guys. If you could reach out to somebody, touch them on the shoulder. Don't let anyone reach over. Reach over. Daily. And let's say this prayer over each other. Ready? The Lord bless you. Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Walk with the Father and be a blessing. Have an awesome week. See you guys next week.